time, any day, every day, any time, any time. When we're strong, when we're strong, when we're kind, when we're kind. We're gonna shine, we're gonna shine, we're gonna shine, we're gonna shine. Like campfires, like bright moonlight, like the sun above. Like Christmas stars, like icicles, like pine trees in the house. We're gonna shine, we're gonna shine, we're gonna shine, we're gonna shine. Every day, every day, anytime, anytime. When we're strong, when we're strong, when we're kind, when we're kind. We're gonna shine, we're gonna shine, we're gonna shine, we're gonna shine. Like campfires, like bright moonlight, like the sun above. Like Christmas stars, like icicles, like pine trees in the house. We're gonna shine, we're gonna shine, we're gonna shine, we're gonna shine. Every day, every day, any time, any time. When we're strong, when we're strong, when we're kind, when we're kind. We're gonna shine, we're gonna shine, we're gonna shine, we're gonna shine. Hi friends, I am so grateful that this is the season of Advent, the season that leads into Christmas and to the winter holidays. Advent is a season of waiting, and I think about the waiters who are waiting on tables, and some of us might think that they're just waiting for us to leave or waiting for something to happen. But did you know that that's not what the word waiting means? To wait means to watch. To wait was the job of the watch people as they were attentive and watching. Not just watching our clocks, but watching to life. In the season of Advent and waiting, I invite us to lean in and to watch, to watch closely and carefully. So come, I invite you to light your chalices and sing with us and let worship have its way with you. Come, let us worship together.
that we might celebrate together, give each other support, and hold each other in love. This week, we ask Unity staff and families to share what is on their hearts and minds in this season of Advent. From Laura Park, husband Eric, and their children, Leif and Emily. A joy. My mother-in-law is almost completely moved to Minnesota from Maine, and we're closing on her new town home today. Another joy, even though it wasn't what it usually is, Thanksgiving has some very sweet moments. Everyone contributed their usual food. We met outside and masked to exchange takeout boxes, and we had a great Zoom call. We really had fun times spending game together as well. And a joy and a sorrow, or a jarro. My parents will be moving out of the home I grew up in, where they lived for over 50 years. I'm so grateful that they'll be able to move into a lovely apartment where there are friends who are eager to welcome them. I'm sad that we didn't know last year was our last Christmas Eve in their home. And this from Heidi Burkholtz. She writes, My joy this week is that I tested negative for COVID after having a scary couple of days with symptoms. I've never been so happy to just have a sinus infection. And a sorrow is that Aunt Lucy died without having others there in the hospital due to the complications of COVID. The first person I have known personally to die from the virus. She was 89 years old, lived a long and full life, just not ending the way that Heidi would have wanted for her, and keeping the family and loved ones close during this difficult time. And from our friend and chapel colleague, Ray Hallmeyer, Ray expresses that her grandparents, who had spent four days in the hospital after they were rushed after testing positive for COVID, but after four days in the hospital, which is a rarity in their 60 plus years of marriage, they are now reunited and are recovering very well at home. Ray writes, I give so much thanks and gratitude for committed, kind-hearted nurses and the technology making it possible to safely communicate with loved ones. And from Jan Eller Isaacs, she wants to hold up our joyful support of Carrie McNeil and Elijah Roba, who both underwent surgery on Monday. Elbow surgery for Elijah and a cancer procedure for Carrie. Jan, Rob, and the Unity staff and our whole congregation also share sorrow for Ethel Griggs' death this past Friday. Her service is on Thursday morning at 11 o'clock and is being live streamed. Will you join with me in prayer? Holy One, in this season of Advent, in the season of wait, waiting. We thank you for this community of family and friends, those near to us and those who are near, even across Zoom and technology. Thank you for giving us a community to wait with us. We know that watching our lives at this moment is not an easy one for many of us. We thank you for the smiles that help us to watch. We thank you for the embrace of loved ones who help us to watch closely into the season. We thank you for these prayers and for opportunities to share that also help us to watch to the life of many across this planet as waves of grief and sorrow move through so many lives. Thank you that as we watch, we can see 
nurses and medical staff and epidemiologists that we can see neighbors right alongside of us, everyone doing their very best so that we might see hope and compassion in service to one another. So in the season of waiting, keep open the eyes of our hearts and our spirits that we might see the movement of your care, of your light of hope working in our lives. May it be so. And Amen. When I breathe in I breathe in peace. When I breathe out, I breathe out love. When I breathe in, I breathe in peace. When I breathe out, I My daughter, Harper, is worried about her brother. She's worried that he doesn't know how to be bored. And I said to her, Harper, I've seen him bored. And she said, no, no. See, you haven't seen him bored. What you've seen him do is you've seen him go on his phone. You've seen him, you can get on his phone and watch TikTok about people falling off of trampolines or doing YouTube videos about uh, Magic the Gathering. You've never seen him actually be so, I've heard this from her before, and this kind of resonates with me because I'm afraid that we spend too much time on our phones and that we're too much of a, a default of getting to that phone every time we've got a little bit of time. And I say, so you think it's bad that he doesn't know how to just be bored? And she says, oh yeah, it is really bad because it means that he can't give himself that time to just like focus, to just be calm because that's what makes us want to do something that's what makes us feel like i gotta get going that's what our creativity comes in those times and i've heard this from her before and i know that this is really a truth for her and it makes me think it makes me think about a time a story that i have about her and about where i was learning a valuable lesson about being bored about waiting i should start by telling you I do think of myself as a really bad waiter. I hate to wait. Often, I won't wait. If I see a line, I say, we're not going, we're not gonna do that. If the restaurant wants us to wait for 20 minutes, I say, let's go to a different restaurant. I don't like to wait. So this story goes back to when Harper was about five years old, and her whole life as an infant and as a toddler, she had a lot of earaches. She would get ear, ex, ear infections probably once every three months. And she was pretty good at it, about it. But I know it hurt. And we would put her on antibiotics and it would take care of it. But they kept coming. So when she hit about the age of five, we knew we needed to take her to a specialist. And so taking her to specialists involved lots of examinations and lots of tests. And with all of those, there was always lots of waiting waiting to see doctors, waiting for appointments, waiting for test results. And as I said, I didn't like to wait. This one time in particular, there was a whole morning that we were spending doing uh, tests, and we were waiting for the last big hearing test. And we were waiting, and we were waiting. And, and honestly, if you've been in any of these clinics, you know that they do a lot of things to try to make the waiting period doable. Right? And in this particular one, there was a fish tank, a big fish tank with exotic fish. There were lots of chewed on kids' books for us to look at. There were games. There were things on the wall, I remember, where you could move a bead through a wire. <clears throat> and we did all that stuff. But still, what's on my mind is this has taken a lot of time. I could be doing other things. I'm bored. I don't like this. I'm checking my phone. I'm looking at my clock, at my watch. And occasionally, Harper is saying to me things like, Dad, uh, is a coop a house for chickens? 
And it seems like it comes out of nowhere. And I say, uh, yeah, it's kind of a house. It's where they lay their eggs. That's right. Uh, geez, this is too long. Oh, no. Oh, my goodness, how long this is. And at a certain point, Harper and I were sitting next to a chalkboard. And Harper had a whole fist of colored chalks in her hands. And she starts making little clucking sounds. And I look over, and she's drawing a chicken on the chalkboard. And I think that's pretty cute. And so I took a yellow chalk, and I drew a little chicken on there. And she starts to ask me about, how long are chickens in the egg? What do they know when they're in the egg? And I'm answering a little bit, but i got to admit, my thinking is more about how this time is going. And I got mad. I got mad at a certain point. This is actually fairly uncharacteristic of me. I went up to the receptionist's desk and I said, how much time is this going to take? Do you know how long this is? I, do I get to bill you guys for the time that you're taking? And the receptionist, who's used to this sort of thing, says, sir, sir, I'm very, very sorry. We have had a couple of emergency situations today which have just pushed us back. Okay. And I go back. And this goes on for a while. And finally, we are called in. We are called in, and Harper is brought into a room, and I'm able to see through a window, and Harper is set at a chair at a desk, and they put the headphones on her head. And she smiles at me, and it's a little nervous making. But I'm watching that, and the time is going, the time is going. I'm watching Harper's hand go up. I'm watching her smile. And pretty soon I hear her say, clop, clop, clop. And I look over at her, and she's got her hands under her armpits. And she's going through the window, knowing that I'm going through the pain of this waiting, but kind of telling me it's OK. And I see the technician laughing. And the technician takes the headphones off of Harper and brings Harper up to me, and she says, you have a lovely daughter. And I say, I know. Thank you. That makes it feel a little bit better, but still, I'm huffy. Okay, let's do it. And so we finally walk out of that office. I'm just full of righteous indignation about all this time. And I notice, I look at this chalkboard, and on this chalkboard where we've been drawing little things, I see that Harper has drawn a chicken coop. And in the chicken coop, she has drawn a nest. And on the nest is an egg. And there is a mother chicken sitting on the egg. And there is a little chick inside the egg. And the chick is pounding with its wings on the egg. And there are words coming from the egg that say, look, Dad, the chicken wants to get out. The chicken has to wait. Where is the chicken? Look, the chicken is out. And she drew a picture of the chicken flapping its wings. I looked at that and I said, can you write words? I didn't know she could write like that. I knew she could write bat, cat, fat, but these were sentences. And it was amazing. And I almost missed it. I almost missed the whole thing. And that made me think, you know, in that last hour, however long it was, we saw a beautiful fish. We read some really funny books. We had a conversation. And Harper wrote the first sentences that I ever saw her do. And I almost missed it. And she told me about how a chicken is waiting. It's waiting to get out of that egg. And it wants to get out. And it wants to break free. And when it breaks free, it will do everything. It will hug its mom and its dad. And it will peck and scratch and live its life. And so I looked at her and said, Harper, you are amazing. Thank you. And she said, cluck, cluck, the chicken got out. Okay. Join us in singing O Come, O Come, Emmanuel on page 225. <laughs>
remember so much happens in the waiting, so much hatching, so much waiting and ready to 